that I know, that I've learned uh, from in radio. I've learned a lot from her and, and, and vice versa. I try to take a little bit from everybody that I get a chance to work with. Do you, do you think that's the right outlook to have, Jana? Oh, definitely. I learned from everyone around me, and Tuttle, I have learned from you. <laughs> I've learned so much from you. First of all, I've learned to grind when you have to grind. Don't you think you're a good grinder? Uh, I just don't quit. You know what? I think it's because I'm so dumb. I didn't. I don't know when to quit, though. You know, like there are some people that are like that. That's not what I meant, Tuttle. I meant <laughs> it in a flattering way. I, know. I meant it that you're you're I, I want to say scrappy but you're a little scrappy like you you pick up and you're you're like I'm gonna make the best of this mud <laughs> well, you know I was thinking about that the other day okay um there's some people that are just naturally gifted at something like they just have a knack for it. Don't, don't you, don't you think that like, everybody, like I think it? everybody has a genius and sometimes it comes so easily to us that we don't even recognize what our own genius is. But, and I'm not trying to compare the two, but if you look at somebody that had to work harder to get to the same level as somebody, does that make sense? I mean, does it, I I don't know. It just it's weird. You look at it like, oh, they were just God givenly talented with that certain thing, but I had to work ten times as hard to get to that point. What's more impressive, you think, the person that's grinding on a daily basis, or or you probably shouldn't compare those two. I don't think you should compare it because we all are in a different lane or a different hula hoop, so to say. And we all have different experiences that bring us to where we are. And who's to say that one person that we think everything is coming so easily and so naturally to them, maybe their genius is that they can control their thoughts and their mind and they expect things to be great and to come naturally to them, which is a skill in itself. So, and, and honestly, even if they look like things are shiny and polishy on the outside, sometimes we don't really know what's going on inside that hula hoop. <laughs> hula hoop, now, funny you, analogy, you right? You, you, you've been doing a lot of motivational stuff, and, and I think I've talked to you about this before. How, how, what advice would you give somebody that works as hard as they can? Because everybody tells you hard work pays off, hard work pays off. But I think that's something our parents tell us to make us strive for bigger and better things. Mm -hmm. But when you get it as an adult and you look at it through real life eyes, that's not the case because in the business that we've done, we know that we busted our ass just as hard as another person. We're like, why the hell do, they, why are they where they are? The place I want to be. How do you not let that eat you up? I'm going to tell you one of the biggest secrets. And this will change your life if you can really grasp it. Mm -hmm. And that is that the world is actually working for you and not against you. And that little shift right there will take you from the victim mentality to, into appreciation and gratitude. And so your example is you feel like you had to work harder to get to where you are. Along the way, you learn so many lessons. And if you can somehow shift your mind and think, I am so grateful that I was at the bottom of the rung at Real Radio because it learned, it taught me, it made me learn how to be scrappy and how to turn mud into mud pies. And it, it taught me how to ask for what I really want and to really go after it and to really be a go-getter, which is yeah. you, I'm describing you. Well, I mean, I agree. I agree. I would not change anything about my life. Everybody always asks me, 
would you change places with a very famous person? And and even though they got those millions and they're they're would you, rich, would you change places, Tuttle? No, Let's I would talk not about change. Them. No, I would not. I would not change places because my experiences are my experiences, and they are who they made me what I am. Do you, do not you even think, Brad Pitt or George Clooney. You know what, though, this is not all George Clooney. Todd all George Clooney. Let me think here. Oh, right. I would hate, I would hate my life to know that somebody had everything. And when I see like a good looking, a, a successful, attractive man, I'm like, God, if you believe in God, God, you know, couldn't have given him everything. So I picture small penis the whole time. <laughs> Like that, that's what I'm saying. Like, you know, I'm like, God, you know, he can't give these people everything. So there's got to be like a deformity. Speaking of, of small penis. Oh my <laughs> gosh, Tuttle. So I was out. I told you last time I talked to you that I have this hill, this great big yeah. hill that I go out and I train on. And I actually push my wheelchair up this hill because it just, it not only is good physically, but it's good mentally. You're like, hey, this is representative of my life, and I'm going to keep climbing until I reach my goals, right? Yeah, okay. So we were out climbing this past weekend, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, right as we're about to get to the top of this hill, there's four donkeys. Four <laughs> <laughs> right on the side of the road okay and so I'm like we have to stop like we have to stop and enjoy there's there's a reason why we're climbing this hill and we're encountering a bunch of jackasses right <laughs> that is so so representative of how yeah. life really is so we we go over there and three of these donkeys I am telling you I had never seen any thing like it i was like do they have five legs it's <laughs> that fifth leg i see and and i'm cracking jokes like oh i've never heard the saying oh jason he's kind of like a donkey what about jason? Yeah. jason that's the thing about you too is that you feed off of each other like when you get on a roll and then <sighs> Jay, jason's not doing it but he kind of is like poking you and egging you on a little bit and yes. you see that you're getting the attention and you just keep going and going i could only imagine the jokes that were made and stuff and then so I mean I am really checking out the anatomy of these donkeys because I have never in my life taken the time to do that right and yeah. I'm just like a little a little girl looking up penis for the first time in the encyclopedia which I did in fourth grade and got in big trouble for but anyway so I'm totally checking it out and 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 imagine Imagining all sorts of things, and then this fourth donkey comes oh, up, and just like you said, he was the George Clooney of the donkey tribe that I met. <laughs> On the outside, he looked like he had everything, but then as I as I literally bent over <laughs> and and really checked him out, I thought, oh. I don't think I'd want to be that donkey. <laughs> I don't even know how we got it, but that's funny as shit. Oh, my God. Uh, so what's the moral of the story? You know, the... The, the, the moral of the story the is, you know what? We met a bunch of jackasses on our hill. We had a good laugh. It became a little self-deprecating, <laughs> and then we we went on with our journey, and we accomplished our goal. There you now, go. Now, I I think it's impossible for people to stay motivated twenty four seven, right? I mean, we're we're all going to be having those down times, mm -hmm. no matter what. I mean, you look at a guy like Michael Jordan. They said one of the most competitive people in the world, but. Maybe maybe he had that type of motor, but do you think people are? Do you know that them? Michael? Do you know that Michael Jordan did not make his high school basketball team? You know this, but that's right? That's motivation. That's motivation right there for you. And I, I'm telling you a little something about motivation, because mm -hmm. if you know a little bit about me, 
I wasn't able to get out of bed for two years. Two years. I laid on my crazy, couch. You know? That's right. That 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 blows my mind because I've known you. I know that I knew that Jana every day that had a smile on her face whenever we would go back and forth, like when our show would end and you guys would be coming in. I never saw you in a bad mood. And just to hear that, it just I'm not saying it's a good thing that it happened, but it shows that people do get down. People are human. People are human. And this happens. And it it was almost like a doom loop because I broke my leg. I wasn't able to move. And then I started eating a lot and not really liking the way I looked. I had lost my identity with the radio station. I didn't have a creative outlet. I felt embarrassed that this was the situation I was in. And Wait, it just why kept... embarrassed? Why why I mean because I you felt didn't embarrassed want to that I would go out when I would go to the grocery store and people would come over and say, Jana, is that you? I barely recognize you. And I'm thinking, oh, you know, here I am. I'm a paraplegic in a wheelchair. And I just answered to the name Jana Banana. How much specific, more specific can you get? Like, it's me. And I get it. And I've gained a little weight. And then they would then they would follow that up with, what are you doing these days? And I would have no answer. And then it would go into, you used to be so funny. And I felt like a has-been. I felt like a has-been, washed-up turd. Wait a minute. And I didn't like myself. I did not like myself, Tuttle. And I don't know if anyone can relate to that. But I was embarrassed that this was the situation that I found myself in. And I did it at my own will because I left Real Radio because I thought there was something bigger and better for me. And then I started to doubt myself along the way. And when you start doubting yourself, it becomes a mental game. And then when I doubted myself and I happened to break my leg, it just was like, oh, poor me, poor me. But let me tell you something about motivation because I got a little sidetracked there. The minute you start getting clarity, the motivation automatically follows. Now, and you ask me what I mean by that, but when you start deep diving and asking yourself the real questions in life, what is it that I really want to do? What is my purpose? Why? Why do I want to do this? How do I achieve this? When you really start asking yourself those four questions, what is it that I believe? What is it that I want? Why do I want it? And how do I get it? Those are the four questions. And when you start really digging for the answers, you start lining up your values, your, it's, it's what I call your North Star. Mm-hmm. And then, then when you really hone in on that and you declare it this is exactly what i want then the rest of the universe starts falling into place for you almost in a magical way to where you think oh my gosh i've got the midas touch here because Mm -hmm. i i talk about oh i want to write a book and next thing you know an hour later i'm meeting some dude out while i'm walking my dog and he's saying hey i'm a book writer and I'm like, oh my gosh, that's bizarre, right? Yeah, so now let me ask you this. I, I, the, the picture behind you, and, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to relate this, okay? Yeah. It always helps me out to write things down, to be able to look at them, things I want to accomplish. And that's kind of like your vision board, or is that, is that this something is my, else? This is my vision board, and I made this at the beginning of covid I made yeah. this vision board. And believe it or not, within just the COVID 130 days or 50 days, I don't even know how, how long we've been in lockdown, every single one of these pictures has come true for me. Why, why, why is it a visual thing 
helps you more? Is it, is it your, something you can visually see? It's something concrete? Not really concrete, but just something, a reminder? Exactly. You are so spot on. And honestly, I look at, so I look at these, I look at the pictures that I put. I put happy. So I see happy every day when I come into this room. I see visually happy. And so not only am I visualizing happy, I'm visualizing what Jana would be like if she was happy. And when you start visualizing that, then that's what you become. You automatically become happy. So here's another little secret that you can use this whenever you start feeling like you're in a funk. Whatever follows I am, I am, and then whatever you say next, that's what you're going to become because that's your verbal vision board. So if you say, I am tired, I am confused, I am overwhelmed, that is the state that you are going to be in. But if you say, I am getting my second energy, I am figuring this out, I am awesome, then that's what you become. It's, it, it, it seems so simple and yet so complex at the same time, but believe it or not, it was Walt Disney that said the the greatest tool that we have is our imaginations, the ability to think outside the box. And our, I'm telling you, your thoughts and your mind, your imagination, your visions, what you dream about, that is what your destiny is. Now, you may not, may or may not know, because I'm, I'm always interested. A lot of people forget. Us as humans, we're nothing but animals. We're a part of the animal kingdom. You're a donkey. You're <laughs> such a donkey, Tuttle. <laughs> no, and but, not, <laughs> not the George Clooney donkey. That's for oh, yeah. certain. <laughs> uh, but what I was saying is I'm always fascinated how our brains evolved to being smarter than the other. Do you think animals, like are we the only species that has doubt? like and has motivation do is is it something in our dna or is it something we're cursed with because everybody says yes our minds have evolved we've become smarter but has it become to a point where we we create doubt for ourselves sometimes we, we we all have it including trees uh, my cousin texted me yesterday of her in this forest and she said i'm i'm tree bathing right now and i thought is that a thing <laughs> That's a thing, right? Well, but the trees, yeah. they sway and they dance and they're talking to one another and they grow and they don't fight. The, the limbs of the trees don't fight over the sunshine. They find their own way, right? Yes. And, and when it comes to animals, we all are evolving and we are learning from the animals just like the animals are learning from us. I take a a caterpillar for an example because I many times felt like I had become a caterpillar in my life caterpillars what do they do they eat they and pages. eat every day that's all they do is they eat and for me I got to the point in my job where I couldn't eat anymore I was like I need to grow there's something about me inside me that's saying you know what, Jana? I've outgrown this, and it's time for me to evolve. So just like a caterpillar, I went into my little cocoon. I melted down to goo, where I absolutely did not recognize myself. And then all of a sudden, I started waking up one day and finding my, my imagination, my mind, I started volunteering. I start things started working for me. I started saying, "This is what I want in my life." And next thing you know, I'm starting to grow these wings. And, and so, animals just like people, and, and we're all learning from each other. We're really all just one consciousness, believe it or not. And that's yeah, what I now, 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 
a lot of people get down and they're like, they think to get motivated, it has to be a big life changing experience, but there's just little things, just this one little thing that can get in your brain. And, and it's weird how it works. Like, for example, this is what I want to ask. You've been doing a lot on your YouTube channel. How can people find your YouTube channel if they want to check YouTube, it out? YouTube, Jana Shelfer, J-A-N-A-S-H-E-L-F-E-R, Jana Shelfer. I post every single day. I haven't missed a single one. And we what have got you motivated to. So I've decided that being in the life coaching business and when people start really coming to me for advice, I have been finding that every aspect of our life is connected. It's all interweaved. So what I have done is I have started to really dissect each area of my life. And I started with health and fitness because that was the one I kept putting on the back burner and saying, you know what? I don't really want this. So again, back to those four questions. If you really ask yourself, why is health and fitness important? What do I want in my life? Where's the why? What is the why behind this? It's all connected, though. If I want to be a model, if I want to motivate people, if I want to be in front of the camera, if I want to not only talk the talk, but walk the walk or roll the roll, as I say in a wheelchair, then I have to be healthy and fit. And that affects my mind. And my mind affects my intellect and my ability to speak. Everything is connected. And so what I did was I started dissecting these different areas of my life. Um, this week, I think we're talking about career and our finances. And I've been going through and really, really asking those tough questions. And then I, I've been putting it on YouTube and it hasn't been pretty. There's been some emotions that have started to surface. And I think, wow, I didn't know that my sex life was so terrible. Now, you can't, you can't, you can't think of it that way, Jana, because like, for example, when I first started my podcast, yes. you have to look at it in a different light because the world we were used to, it was a built-in audience. That place was already there before us. You see what I'm saying? Yes. This is something we're building our own, our, our own path. We're building our own foundation, and that doesn't happen overnight. Exactly. It takes time. And again, I have realized that I'm not doing this. The reason I'm doing this is not to become popular or not to build a, a following. The reason I'm doing this is because I believe so deeply in my program that I'm developing. And I believe so deeply that there's people out there that are hurting. And I think if we're just authentic and real with our emotions and tell people, you know what, I've been through a really bad time. I think that can help other people. So I feel like I've, I've got my my reasoning for doing this and therefore you don't care as much whether or not you only have three views <laughs> it's gonna grow i promise you well now have you had that moment yet have you had somebody since you've been doing the motivational speaking and trying to share your story have you had that moment where somebody reached out and said, Jana, I really got to tell you, you know, you connected with me. We didn't talk, but you were talking to me, though. It, it, it seemed like you were talking to me. Have, yes. you, have you had, I had one, one I had one last week that was pretty profound. And my category last week was parenting. Mm -hmm. Because part of my depression that I went through was the fact that I wanted to be a mom. And that didn't happen for us. And I'm okay with that now because but you're taking in a lot of a lot of people don't know this is that you guys took in exchange students, right? I mean, yes, I know that's, that's not like having a kid of your own, but I mean, it kind of you're helping somebody. It filled it not only filled that void, but these exchange students came in 
And they taught me, to be honest with you, going into that whole interaction, I thought that Jason and I were helping them, but bringing them into our house was really, they helped us just as much, if not more. And that's how the universe works. When you really start turning your intentions to other people, then all of a sudden it starts coming back twofold and you almost think, oh my gosh, why didn't I figure this out a long time ago? Yeah, I mean, and, and it was, and I know the thing is that you and Jason, I would, I would, I would be like winning the lottery having you guys as parents because both of you <laughs> are responsible, but it would be like, hell yeah. Oh, my God, go to your room. <laughs> Well, you could be stiff. I know that. But what I'm saying is that, you know, Jason, he reminds me of a big kid. Responsible, but he jokes around. Yes. I'm married to a big kid. <laughs> I make love to a big kid. Oh. <laughs> but I mean, you know what? You need that, though. You need that in the life to keep it interesting. Yeah, speaking of which, how how are you are you still single Tuttle? Because I have a lot of female friends <laughs> who are horny. Oh and they, yeah, they are I ready. Mean, blind dates all day. I'm I'm down. Hell yeah. I'm I'm I would be I would be it would be amazing. See now you got me off my game. I'm all <laughs> stuttering and stammering now. <laughs> So I love, it. I love following you were it was during the hurricane and yeah. you you took your camera out and you said, Now I'm not gonna be like the weatherman and actually stage a blow away where the sign yeah. comes and hits me in the head. <laughs> well, you Janet, it was so funny. You know what I wanted to do? I I I'm not scared to do anything but like the weather channel. They they pulled up, they had all these like you know, amateur guys out there filming stuff. And I so wanted to run up and like mess with them while during the live. Drink behind them. <laughs> yeah, but I was like, I felt bad because we've been broadcasters. And I'm like, I know that would be really bad for me to do, uh, for it to happen to me, but I so wanted to do it. Oh, that's funny. What was the name of the storm? I, I, Z, I, I Zest Oh, that's the other thing. It, uh, I said Asa or something. Yeah, it was so it, hard to say. I, I, I don't like, know why they. I don't know why they did that. Who is in charge of naming these hurricanes? Let's write them a letter. I think the next hurricane should be called Tuttle. <laughs> yeah, hell yeah! I don't want it. Listen, I don't. I don't wish bad on anybody, but I want it to be like a cat five. I want it to just cause good devastation. They'll talk about it for years. And then she'll right, find because, I, I mean, I hate to say this, but I kind of, I kind of get a, I call it a weather woody because when, when the hurricanes come, you're like, Oh good. We get to hunker down. And it, it's kind of, it's kind of like when you were younger and you built a fort in the, in the living room with all the couch cushions and blankets. And then you're like, Oh yeah, let's get inside and hang out. That's how hurricanes are for us. Now let me ask you: You're you're from the Midwest. Yes. Where where did you guys did you ever get to experience a a, a really strong tornado? Like where there's you guys no know? place like home. No place like home, Tuttle. Yeah. If only but, I could click my heels. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, the tornadoes. Though you guys dealt with those growing up, right? I mean, that was a part of everyday life. Yes. In fact, I remember a couple tornadoes. One, I was at a rodeo. I was at a rodeo. And I remember the, the announcer talking now, about... you wearing? Boots? Boots? I was. I was wearing boots and a cowboy hat. Oh, I, I bet you were the hottest thing going at the rodeo. These boots are made for walking or wheeling. And that's just <laughs> what I do. One of these days, these boots are going to wheel all over you. Boom, 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 boom. Now, but that's that's great, though. But did you guys have, like, a storm cellar and stuff where you guys we would did. go? We did. So we had a cellar, which actually had a dirt floor. 
A yeah. cellar with a dirt floor. I mean, yeah, try doing that in Kansas, Florida. Right? You'll be in, yeah, try doing that in Florida. You'll be in water. And I, I remember whenever we'd go down there, I would go, oh, God, it really stinks down here. And it just always felt kind of dusty. And my mom would say, well, Jana, you try cleaning a cellar with a dirt floor. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little hard to keep the dust up. <laughs> Man, you know. It, 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 <laughs> but yes, I and I also remember one tornado. Oh, this was kind of a fun tornado. We were at school and all of a sudden the alarms went off. And so we all, I mean, we had practiced exactly what we were supposed to do. But still, when it's a real live situation and you can look out the windows and you're thinking, oh, it's dark out there. This isn't good. But anyway, all the kids, we scurried to the locker rooms, okay, which, again, stunk. It's like when a tornado happens, you always go to the smelliest place you can find. But anyway, we're in the locker room, okay, and our choir teacher comes in and says, I mean, we're supposed to be sitting Indian style with our heads between our knees, okay? They have, like, a special position, and our choir director came in and said, we have a concert tomorrow. Let's sing. So we're in the locker room with our head between our knees trying to sing, oh, say can you see? <laughs> you know what? I would be, I would run towards a tornado. I would, I would, I would come out of the locker room. And just say, end it. End it all for but, me. But the funniest thing about this, Tuttle, is that the choir director, he was like, the acoustics are so great in here. <laughs> so then, after the tornado, we had to practice in the locker room. Like, sometimes he would just take us into the locker room to practice our song because it sounded better. <laughs> Speaking of music, do you, do you still play the harmonica? No, I have not played the harmonica in many years. And it was so funny. I just had one of those Facebook memories that came up and it said, you were performing with Charlie Musselwhite, who is a famous harmonica player. Yeah, very much so. With my 10 lessons of harmonica, I could play a scale and a couple really, really elementary songs. I actually got on stage with him and we jammed. <laughs> you know, out of all the things... You want to know the secret of harmonica, Tuttle? If you what, ever what? decide to pick it up in the next it's... week or two. Okay. Say the word dookie. You say the word dookie in the harmonica. In and, and out, though, so you're blowing in? Yeah, if you go dookie, 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 dookie. <laughs> You keep just like that, it, it sounds like you're going, meow, 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 meow. It, it really comes out like a, a nice harmonica sound with a little folksy and bluesy. So, now, dookie is your key word. Dookie. Now, I wanted to talk about this, and maybe, you know, this, maybe I should have told you before, but I, I was reading, you know, we all have those things we want to do. But when we get older, for some reason, we get discouraged because we think it's going to be too hard. Like, I've always wanted to learn another language. And, and I was thinking about this. Why, do, why does it seem like children learn easier than adults? And, and I, I read it was so weird that you can put a baby in a bilingual family and it's able to pick that up to a certain point in its life. Because it's something weird about babies can hear every single sound that can be made, and that's how they're able to pick it up. Why do you think that is? Do you, do you think our mind just gets older, and, or, or we're afraid of failure because we're older and we've lived through failure and we don't want to fail? Is that what keeps us from trying and learning new things? Yes, yes, and yes. So I, all three of the things that you just said are correct. Babies have very, very new, fresh minds. They are soaking in everything they hear, everything they see, everything they feel. So believe it or not, a baby is learning from even the emotions that 
their parents are feeling. So a lot of times from ages, I think it's, I think it's 12 months to three years, you're learning so much from your parents at that time. And you're feeling every, actually, even before the womb, you're feeling what your mom is feeling. But then there's different stages of the baby where you're actually, you're picking up their facial expressions and you're learning that the tone of their voice, that's how, that's how we communicate with babies. It's not through the words because they don't understand words yet, but they understand our vocal tone, pitch, facial expressions, and they're, they're sucking it in and it is all sticking, if that makes sense. Yeah, also, I mean, but, as we get older, we start, and I hate to say this, but we start painting a picture for ourselves. And with that picture, there are limiting beliefs, limiting beliefs that maybe we have picked up from past failures, limiting beliefs that we have associated with ourselves due to culture or the people around us or limiting beliefs that we have literally inherited from our parents. So believe it or not, a lot of times we get to a point in our life and we end up at pretty much the same level that our parents are at. And the so reason it's like is, self, it's like a self, uh, yeah, like prophecy. prophecy. Yeah. Exactly. And a lot of times that's because we picked up their fears and their concerns when we were babies and we carry that with us and people don't believe it, but have you, I know you talked to Naomi Bradshaw. Yeah, I was just about to bring her up. Um, I got to get her on and, and it's hard to talk about stuff that she's talking about, but I, I also feel like it's helping her out healing and I feel like it's helping other people out. We're helping each other. We're all helping each other, you know? And and so learning from Naomi, I've learned so much from her because you're not only carrying the traumas from your childhood, but you're sometimes carrying the the traumas from past generations. Yeah. And, I, and I this, think this, about that. Yeah, it, like this Black Lives Matter movement that's happening I've studied that intently Jason and I actually took a week off of everything and we just studied and we interviewed and we tried to learn as much as we could about racism in America and complicit bias and all sorts of of issues that spring off of that but for many they carry this I mean, slavery was the original sin of America 400 years ago. And, and people carry that white and black and brown and every color. color. We all carry that, that guilt and that burden. And that's why it's still so difficult to even talk about. Yeah, people, people think, oh, well, that was a long time ago. But in the grand scheme of things, if you're looking at time in a whole, that really was not that long ago in, in, in the grand scheme of things. Especially when you consider the Jim Crow laws. And I mean, Jason and I studied documentaries over this, and you realize that racism, even though we think that it's that we're abolishing it, it starts to it starts to sprout in different areas. So in the 80s, it started sprouting in um, the prison system and how people who were just getting arrested for minor things were being sent to prison. And then all of a sudden the prison population grow. I mean, it, it's so and intertwined. When, you, you look at it, you know, a lot of people don't realize this with uh, the gentrification, forcing certain minorities to live in certain areas. Yes. And those and, are, uh, they those call are the areas. Yes, yeah, exactly. And the tax money, there's less tax money coming in for the schools, which means the education is going to be less in that area. And it's just like a snowball effect of just building and building and building. Yes. You get it. So even though it's not blatant racism, it has spawned in a different form over the over the generations. Yeah, 
Uh, it, now, are you, so you, you spent that time looking. And I, I really do think a great thing about keeping your mind fresh, having new ideas, is trying to learn new things every single day, in my opinion. It, no matter how... No, no matter how small it is, like I'll just be driving in the car and I'll think of something and I'll be like, I don't know the answer of that. And I'll, I'll write it down in my notepad and right, right before I'm about to go to bed, I'll Google it, do my own research, even though it's very minor things. Yes, like yesterday, I found myself taking this little YouTube tutorial on how to carve a carrot. I was like, oh. Say what? Is there a correct way to, you know? Well, they just, they, you know, first you want to shave off the outside and then you want to come up with a plan. And I mean, this guy, he made it look so easy, but he was carving animals and flowers and all sorts of really artistic things out of a carrot. And I thought, ooh, I might want to learn how to do that. Yeah, because it's weird. Yeah, it's funny because like when when you're in school at the moment, when you're young, you're like, oh, what the hell? Why do I need this stuff? What am I ever going to learn from that? Have you ever thought, I mean, in a perfect, well, not in a perfect world, a fantasy world, I always wondered like what I know now, all the knowledge, all the experiences I had now, what would my life have been like if I would have had that knowledge when I was young and youthful? Oh. Have you ever, have you ever oh, thought about that? I, I think about that all the time. Do you know how much I dreaded chemistry class? I hated chemistry. Now, if my chemistry teacher would have said, Jana, if you pay attention in chemistry, then you could make your own makeup one day or you could actually have your own perfume or you could come up with organic cleansing products or if, if you would have made it some way to spark my interest then all of a sudden i think i would have been like oh hydrogen helium lithium beryllium boron carbon nitrogen oxygen fluorine neon hello <laughs> now you're just showing off. I thought you were going to say, I was going to be like, hell yeah, I'm, I'm going to be down. Jana's going to be my homie from now on. If you'd have been like, oh, yes, if I'd have learned chemistry, me and Jason. I only know the method. first 10. I only know the first 10. And that's because it was a, a challenge from the Phillips file days. <laughs> <laughs> No, uh, well, I thought you, when you were talking about chemistry, you were going to say, yeah, me and Jason could be the methamphetamine kings of Winter Garden uh, <laughs> if I would have learned chemistry, I, I, you know. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Breaking bad. Yeah, we are breaking it. bad during COVID, Tuttle. Yeah. <laughs> But, I mean, hey, people still need their drugs you know, during during a pandemic. Especially during a pandemic. Especially. That's when you need your drugs. <laughs> so what, what's on my the My drug horizon? these days, Tuttle, is green smoothie. That's my drug of choice. Now, what, what, what new and exciting things? Because the one thing that I always... I, I know it's not good to be jealous or envy, but I've always envied the relationship that you and your husband, Jason, have. you guys are always going out. You're always doing fun, new, exciting things. Like you, you went out on a jet ski this week. I, how was that? Oh, come over, come over. We can go anytime. Yeah. Man. Now, I, it, 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 go right, ahead. As soon as I saw that, now maybe maybe you can explain. You're always very open. Yes, please. Does open bother, book. I'm an open book. Does it, does it bother you as a, as a paraplegic that uh, are you a good swimmer? Do they teach paraplegics how okay. to be able to swim? So here's something about me. I don't know why this is. And if you really stop and analyze it, it's probably not a good thing. But I am a floater. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a floater and my whole life I can get into a pool and I literally it float and with very, very little work, 
I can yeah. tread for hours. I I don't have trouble swimming. Swimming is easy for me. In fact, I have several mermaid tails. Now, I don't have use of my chest down. Like, I'm paralyzed from the chest down. So, I don't have use of my lower body. But I still put on this big old mermaid tail. And people are like, doesn't that make you drown? And I'm like, no. It looks pretty. And it makes me feel beautiful. Because I feel like, oh, if my lower body doesn't work, I might as well put a fish tail on it. <laughs> <laughs> I swim fine. I swim fine. In fact, I have done several sprint triathlons and in the swimming portion, you wouldn't you wouldn't even know that I was paralyzed. I I can pretty much keep up with people. I mean, they're a little bit faster, but for the most part, I I can swim right along with them and the the other athletes like to swim right behind me cuz I don't kick them in the face. Yeah, you're not throwing up a wake either. Like, you know, you're just, yeah. So, yeah, and, and I hope you didn't mind me bringing that up, but I thought it was something very important because people that are in your situation, maybe they wouldn't become a swimmer or do something like that. And, and I just wanted it to show that even somebody that doesn't even have the use of their legs can still enjoy the water or go in the pool yeah. or something. In fact, Tuttle, so my husband and I have gone scuba diving many times. Now, I've been a certified scuba diver since college. So I think I became certified in 1997. I know. Being, so from, the long Kansas, time. being from Kansas, when was the first time you saw the ocean? Oh, ocean. Well, I the mean, ocean would have been in my mid 20s. Okay. I didn't yeah. know, see, living here in Florida, we take it for granted. And, and I always think about the people in the landlocked area of the United mm -hmm. States. Is it a big deal? Like, oh, my God, that's a big body of water. Well, I find it odd that people here in Florida have never seen snow. I, like, never I think that fall. is so bizarre. I've never <laughs> seen it fall. I've seen it on the ground. What? Oh, because and guess what? Is the, the, one, the, the one I saw, the where I saw it is, and this is this is always a funny thing. Um, I was would go up every single year to Belleville, New Jersey. Now oh. I know that's you know from the area where you're from is Belleville, Kansas, and I was like, oh, that's always cool. Um, you know, every time I went up there, it made me think of you. So, oh, that makes me feel so good. Yes, Belleville, Kansas, couldn't be prouder. And if you can't hear me, I'll yell a little louder. <laughs> B E double L E V I double L E. You know, I'm always in the accents. Does does yeah. Kansas does Kansas have an accent? What is it? Like, yes, or it's, it's, called, normal. it's called normal. That's a, that's okay. the Kansan accent. <laughs> I'm just fascinated by different dialects from all around the place. Me too, Tuttle. Me too. I have tried clear. to study different dialects. I've tried to study different accents. It it was a failure for me. I actually at one oh, point. No, no. Your accent was the funniest goddamn shit that I've ever heard on the radio before. I swear to God, driving home from Orange County to Volusia County, listening to you do the accents. And I got to tell you, what's great is that you're like me. Even though you know it's bad, you fully, you just you commit. You just commit, it. right? You, you just keep, commit. You just got to oh. keep rolling no matter what. Okay. You know it's bad. So I'll tell you something that just happened to me. What? I think I told you last time that we spoke that I have been doing a lot of motivational speaking. And because of COVID, everyone is on Zoom these days. And I'm in a group called Toastmasters, and Toastmasters meets all over the world. How is it going? It's going great. I've spoken in so many different countries. It's been a blessing. However, last week, I spoke in India. And I signed on to the meeting. Now, Toastmasters is a group where we all help each other out. So, yes, there's two speakers, but then there's somebody that's assigned to look out for grammar and for us and ahs and buts, ands, any type of word like that. 
well, I signed on to this meeting and their grim grammarian didn't show up. So they asked me, they said, Jana, would you want to step in and be the um and ah counter? I said, sure. Now this is in India. However, it's an English speaking Toastmasters meeting. And I am in charge of counting the ums, ahs, and buts. And this guy gets up to speak, and every other word is, he would be like, ah, oh, uh, and ah, uh, and ah. Uh. <laughs> and in a six minute speech, I counted 142 ahs. And then I felt like I was, I was the villain of the group because they, they came to me then after the speech and they were like, Grammarian, did you hear any uhs and ahs? And it was just, I mean, you've been on the phone before to someone in India that's trying to give you technical help, right? And it, uh, and ah uh, is a filler word for them. It, it's like they're speaking English. Ah, uh, well, ah, uh, yes, ah, uh, yes, ah. Uh. Well, really it, 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 it's it's weird because if you if you like, I I'm so interested in like police interrogation and stuff. You, whenever they're talking, when people would use ums and ahs and stuff, they're thinking of what they're supposed to say, say, and that's why they ask you the same questions over and over again, because some people are really, really good at it, and that's also why, and I know this is going to sound weird, I'm fascinated with, like, <clears throat> psychopaths and serial killers, because their brains, they work so differently than ours. They, they hear me out. I know you're looking yeah. at me. You're looking. You're you're looking at me like I'm crazy. Like I'm never talking to Tuttle again. Tell me more. Tell me more. They they have their 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 natural like animal instincts are stronger. They don't have those urges where it's right or wrong. They just go for it. They they act out on their impulses and 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 they do it now i'm not saying if more people were like serial killers but what i'm saying is not having that fear well that, it goes you know, back to it goes back to adults not pursuing their dreams right it's because over time we've developed this filter and if we could just think like a sociopath <laughs> I, I hate to we would say all that. be fulfilling our dreams, right? Yeah, because we all, there's a lot of people, why people don't do things is they're either saying, well, that's not right morally. But like, for example, I'm not going to name names, you know, but. Oh, we name names. Just, we, we, yeah, I would, but I don't want to. But in broadcasting, you, you look, you look at the people that maybe aren't the best people morally. Those are the ones that succeed. Those are the ones that have the money. They're the ones that are above everybody else. Do I believe that there are some good, successful, rich people? Yeah, they are, but it's very few because the people, to be able to get where they are, they don't care who they have to step on to get them. Interesting. You I may, don't know. You may want to work with a life coach on that one, Tuttle, <laughs> because what you have just said to me says that you have the belief that wealthy people are bad. No, I didn't. I, I, I know I shouldn't paint with a broad brush. I, I'm not doing that. I'm just saying, though, people, to get somewhere, you have to do something. You have to either screw over somebody or, or say, I'm going to do better than them. You screw them. I don't care about them or their family. It's my, it's my survival and nobody else's because we are working in our business. The people that okay, are high so, up, the ones that are succeeding are the ones that are not great people. Okay. So I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you, this is, this is a secret. Okay. This okay. is going to crack your nut. What you just said, I want you to go back after this. I want you to go back and listen to your own podcast. And I want you to listen to what you just said specifically. 
Okay. And then I want you to write it down and I want you to dissect that. And I really want you to meditate and think about what you just said, because that statement that you just made is going to keep you from succeeding. It's going to hold hold you back. And if you can work through that and I can help you, but if you can work through that limiting belief, because what I heard you say is that in order to be successful, you have to step on people or you have to be unethical or you have, I mean, you said it in different ways, but, but it was something in that umbrella. And what's, ha- what's going to happen in Tuttle world is that every time you start to be successful or you start to make progress in your own career, there's going to be a little thing in your subconscious that's going to sabotage you. It's going to set, you're going to sabotage your own success because deep down you have that deep core belief and it, it could be something, I mean, that I know where you're coming from because I know how you have developed that particular perspective. But I, I'm telling you, if you work with a, a coach or somebody on that particular statement, it's going to go back and it will only help you in your own career. Yeah, but I mean, but is it, what, what, what I want to say, I I'm motivated. I want to do these things, but aren't aren't we who we are from our personal experiences, things yes. that we've experienced in our life, and that's how we judge and perceive the world, though. That's how we judge and perceive the world, but we're all painting ourselves our own reality. I'm sorry. So about the I downer. suggest. What I suggest for you is to start finding, start, start replanting your blueprint. Now, what I mean by that is start finding people that you find super successful that have gotten there the right way and who have gotten there in the way that you want to implement, you want to imitate them if that makes sense so find role models for yourself that have become super successful but they've done it by helping other people and by just doing that one little step you're going to retrain your brain and your own personal blueprint and and you're going to forget about those people in your past because all of a sudden you've now retrained your brain to think Visually and in the future of where you want to go, not not what has made you what you are now, but where you're going. It'll it'll just change that little shift from looking backwards to looking forward. All right, if you gotta go, I mean, I I I just wanted to branch off of something else that I just Please. thought of. It's the way that my brain works, and. I'll make sure the next time I see you, I'll bring you a hundred dollars because this is turning into like a therapy session. I love it. I love it. I'm here to help you, Tuttle, and no money. I just want to be there for you. You've helped me so much that this is me reciprocating. Now, let me, okay. So you're, you're talking about experiences and a lot of the motivational people say that you, you always should be looking for. You, should, you can't control the past. You can't control the past, so why look at it? But I also feel like as we get older, we realize how finite our lives are, though. You know, when you're a kid, you don't think about, oh, it's, I'm going to live forever and stuff. But I'll give you an example. Like during my marriage, okay? Mm-hmm. I, I loved every single time. I loved every memory, every moment. But I can't get out of my head that life is so short and I wasted all that time or, you know, I worked at a job and I ended up having to leave. How, how, any advice on how you don't let stuff like eat you up? Because yes. I look at it wasted time that I'm never okay. going to get back. Okay, you need to stop. And I can work with you with on that as well. What you need to do is learn to be present. 
You need to learn to be present. Don't think in the future because when you think in the future, then you have feelings of worry, anxiety, fear. You're thinking in the future. Oh, what if that happens? What if that happens? What if that happens? So those are all feelings and emotions if you're thinking in the future. Now, what you just said about you and your ex-wife, you have a little bit of bitterness. Resentment. I, I did. I did at first. I did at first. We talk all the time. It's just the way I look at it is. And, you know, you said you always wanted to have kids. I'm, that's pretty much out of my picture, too, mm -hmm. because I think that it's irresponsible for somebody that's older. Yes, it happens, but, you know, you're not going to be there for your child through those important years when they really, really need you because you're going to be old and decrepit or, you know, you can't play with them and stuff like that. It's, it's just stuff like that. I know I should not let it bother me. Uh, and, and I am in a better place, best I've ever been mentally, but I still, mm -hmm. you know, you get those things that, that eat at you though. So the way I do it is I like to find appreciation in those experiences that at the time I thought were the worst things ever. See, and and now I feel like an asshole though. I feel like an asshole complaining to somebody that at a young age or got into an accident and, and you were dealt a bad hand. So I know I shouldn't compare lives, but I should have that outlook where like worse could happen. You know, does that make sense? Uh, Tuttle, I, I, I may have already told you this story, but when I was paralyzed, I was 15 years old. I was in a car accident. All of a sudden I went from being popular girl to, Oh gosh, I'm in the hospital. I can't move or feel my legs. I was so angry, mad, bitter, resentful. I was thinking my life was over. And within three days of being in the rehab hospital, this man who is paralyzed from the neck down, he's a quadriplegic, and he asked me to scratch his nose. Oh, yeah, I do remember. Because his nose itches. And I good. say, I say, no, not that. And he's like, come on, you too good to scratch my nose? So I totally pick this stranger's nose for him. And in that moment, it made me realize, you know what? I am so lucky because I have my hands and I have my mobility and I have this voice and I have these good looks <laughs> and I have all of this talent and it just was enough that one little moment in time was just enough for me to switch into living in gratitude. And it took me from living in the past to living in the present. I am so grateful for this. Now, and, and honestly, I'm sorry to keep cutting you off, but honestly, I lived in gratitude until again, five years, six years ago when I went through another tough time. And it was in that tough time that I actually took time to not only be grateful for the things that I still had, but to sit down and say, I'm grateful for my paralysis. And here's why. And it was that moment because I had in those 30 years, it's been 30 years that I've been in a wheelchair. And in those 30 years, I was grateful to have all these things that I still had, but I never took the time to say, you know what? It's because of my disability that this happened and this happened and this happened. And all of a sudden that unpeeled a whole other layer so you wouldn't be the same person you are today if the circumstances would have been different. I mean, you still would have been Janet. But... I think, and I mean, you never know for sure, but I think that I would have just been another pretty girl. And I think that I would have attracted a husband that maybe loved me on the surface, but nothing like what I have now. I, I attracted a man who married a paraplegic and it was be, 
it was deeper. It was deeper than surface. It, it was so deep that when I couldn't get out of bed for two years, he was right by my side. So there's a reason. And, and, and I, I sometimes think, you know what? I, I have this imagination and I have this sense of humor, which I, I mean, I, I'm not saying I didn't have an imagination or a sense of humor before my accident, but after my accident, because of all these crazy situations that I find myself in, I've had to use humor and I've had to, sometimes when I can't get on a beach, I have to imagine, okay, what would it feel like to have my feet in the sand right now or my feet in the water? And, and I've never been on a sandy beach in my life, but I can tell you almost exactly what it feels like. This is, this, this is a weird question, but I, I have these questions. Isn't it great about what we do is that we can have a conversation and, and, and how it grows, like how it's almost a living, breathing organism because like you'll talk about something and it'll spark an interest in mine. Why, why, I mean, of course you have the use of your, your upper body, but like why, you said you couldn't go out on the beach. Is it because too sandy? Do they make chairs? Why have you never used a, a, a mechanical chair before? Did you never want to be in that position? So, Does that make sense? yes, I, I guess I've never walked on a beach. I've never walked on a beach. I didn't see a beach when I was able-bodied, yeah. so I can only imagine what that feels like to go jogging on the shoreline or to put my feet in the sand. I have some sensation, but I don't have full sensation. So even if Jason yeah. carries me out on the sand, I can put my feet in the sand, but to me, it just feels heavy. It doesn't feel like sand grains going through my toes. I, I don't feel hot and cold at all. So for me to put my feet in the warm sand, I can only imagine what that's like. Now I can put my hand in the sand and I can get an idea, but I've had to develop this imagination. And what's so great about that is that I can tell you, I can imagine almost any any experience, any circumstance. And right now, you're empathetic. Yes. I, I think that's what it is. You're able to picture yourself in, in a situation, even though you've never been in that situation, you can almost imagine every single little detail about it because you, some people, I do agree that they have that, that knack to be able to be self-aware. And I think that's why they're more in touch with other people's feelings because they know those emotions and that scenario, even though they've never been in it. If that makes yes. sense. That is, a, you are spot. You should be a life coach. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh, Jenna, you're one of my favorite people to talk to. Um, Likewise, I'm, Tuttle. I'm so happy for you. What's Jason up to today? We are working. We are working, working, working. He right now is still in sales, so he is trying to make those numbers, even though a lot of places are not working at full capacity. So yeah. he's grinding, which is, which is how we started the conversation, Tuttle. You as a grinder. <laughs> uh, this is this is great. Uh, tell people how they can check you out, all your places, all your yes. social media. Please, please come visit me. I have a YouTube channel right now, and my goal is to get a thousand subscribers. And it's YouTube Jana Shelfer, J A N A S H E L F E R. I go. I go on it every single day. I post videos every single day. And then also, I've been putting my work, my morning workouts on my Facebook page, which is Real Jana Shelfer. R E A L 
Jana, J-A-N-A, Shelfer, S-H-E-L-F-E-R. And every morning I'm doing aerobics. So believe it or not, I never thought that I would be a wheelchair aerobics instructor, but that's what I've become in the last. I think people would love that. I really think it could help some people out as well, too. Uh, I've, I know I've told this story before, but it is amazingly shocking the first time and you shake Jana Banana's hand. Uh, I remember she, it, I like, holy crap. You about squoze my damn fingers off. And, and I was like, holy shit, she is strong as hell. I'm not calling you like man hands or anything. I just said you're very in shape. Well, I got very out of shape believe it or not, during my depression, I gained 35 pounds. And in wheelchair pounds, that's more like 90. Yeah, so. it's, it's amazing. Like, you know, I back to the motivation with the working out, I do agree your health and your fitness is very important because I do feel like you get these chemicals that that help you out, these endorphins. Uh, and and I've been trying to work out. I've been trying to lose the weight, but I just get discouraged because we want results now. We, we us as Americans, we want to see it immediately. And I think that's why these diets and stuff don't work for people because you have to give it time. You got to do it. You got to build. You have to form a habit. Yeah. You have to make it a habit. And to be honest with you, if you just try to do it from sheer willpower, you're not you're not going to succeed. You may succeed for a brief amount of time, but then you're going to fall back to where you were. You really have to ask, why do I want to get in shape? What's my why? And for me, it was my mobility. I had gained 35 pounds and I couldn't transfer my body. And plus my husband wanted to do all these fun activities and I was out of energy. I couldn't even, I mean, it, it took all my energy to shower. <laughs> Yeah. And, and there comes a point where if I want to be my best self, every category of your life is connected. It's all connected. And we have to not only work on one area, like we, we, in our lives, for some reason, we try to say, okay, I'm going to be healthy and fit. And then that month you're healthy and fit. And then the next month you're like, oh, I need to start putting my energy over to my relationship. So then you do that. And then you think, oh, I got to do my career next month. If you start working on all of them at one time, and I know it can be so overwhelming, but eventually the spider web starts building outwards and everything gets better. Everything starts to synergize. It's really amazing. And now I'm going to go run through a brick wall after listening to you speak today because that's how motivated I am. I really do. Yes. Woo. I, I get it. How about this? How about this? We're helping you get some YouTube numbers. If I ran through this brick wall, I'll, I'll give it to you for channel and tell people to subscribe to. So actually, you know what? Can I be the, the Jana Banana or Jana Shelfer YouTube channel stun guy? Like, you know, yes. you can, you're hired. I'll, You're hired. I'll be your yeah. Okay. <laughs> You're hired. Tuttle, yeah. my donkey dick friend. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going out on that note, and and I'm cutting that up, and that's going to be added to the beginning of my intro. Uh, that. I love it. I love it. I am. I'm honored to have you on board. Thank you so much, right. Tuttle. Yeah. I appreciate you so much. Yeah. I'm so yeah. proud of you. I'm proud of you too. One more time, if everybody wants to check out your YouTube channel. Jana Shelfer. Go to YouTube, search Jana Shelfer. I will be there today to say hello. All right, Jana. Have a good one. Thank you.